Hello again, everybody. This is Brother Chooch, thinking out loud about the end times. We are on video number nine of our series, The Rapture Convergence Theory. And yes, this video finally will not be about fruit, but we're going to talk about an animal, a very important animal in scripture, the heifer, a red one at that. If you've watched the first eight videos, you will know that we have spent a significant amount of time and study showing why we believe that the rapture will be in the springtime and how uh, the scriptures pointing to or has pictures of the judgment or the tribulation starting and ending in the fall. Now we're going to spend a little bit of time and some videos showing why we believe 2020 seems to be the year of interest uh, based on this theory. Okay, there's a theory, so it could be wrong. However, um, we're looking at scripture, we're looking at these different aspects and trying to bring it all together of why um, we're excited about what 2020 has to offer. That being said, let's get into our, uh, our study of this scripture and of this um, the happenings of even what's happening today in regards to this red heifer. Why is it important and why is it uh, significant to end times, especially this particular year? So as we look at um, our study, we want to turn to Numbers, and we want to look at Numbers 19. Of course, this is the Old Testament. And we want to understand what the Bible has to say about the red heifer. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, This is the ordinance of the law which the Lord hath commanded, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they bring thee a red heifer, without spot, wherein is no blemish, and upon which never came yoke. And ye shall give her unto Eleazar the priest, that he may bring her forth without the camp, or outside the camp, and one shall slay her before his face. And Eleazar the priest shall take of her blood with his finger and sprinkle of her blood directly before the tabernacle of the congregation seven times. And one shall burn the heifer in his sight, her skin, her flesh, and her blood, and her dung shall he burn. And the priest shall take cedar wood and hyssop and scarlet and cast it into the midst of the burning heifer. Then the priest shall wash his clothes and he shall bathe his flesh in water and, the, and afterward he shall come into the camp and the priest shall be unclean until the even. And he that burneth her shall wash his clothes in water, and bathe his flesh in water, and shall be unclean until the evening. And the man that is clean shall gather up the ashes of the heifer, and lay them up without the camp in a clean place, and that shall be kept for the congregation of the children of Israel. For water of separation, it is a purification of sin. But it has to do with this um, purification of the people, of the whole nation of Israel, which is needed in order for the tabernacle or for uh, the temple to be of use for purification in order for the sacrifices to begin to take place. So the red heifer becomes extremely, extremely crucial for the temple to be able to be operated and not be defiled, okay? Now, knowing this, we know, and 
A lot of our information comes from the Temple Institution in Israel. It is clear that many in Israel, especially those involved and associated with the Temple Institution, they want the Third Temple up and running and functioning like days of old. They have what's needed to be in place. They have the priests ready to go. They have the cornerstone ready. They have the articles of the temple ready to go. They have the blueprints ready to go. All they need is a thumbs up by the government and they could put this temple up in months. It could be done quickly. And they're confident that they're going to get the okay very soon. All right. So knowing that and knowing the willingness of many in Israel for this temple to be built and to be operational, they believe that it's connected to uh, Messiah coming. For the believer, this is hugely significant because we know that there needs to be a temple for there to be a abomination that causes desolation. And there needs to be a red heifer for there to be a temple. So logic would say that if there is no red heifer, there can't be a temple that's operating. And if there can't be a temple that's operating, there can't be offerings, there can't be sacrifices. And if there can't be sacrifices and there can't be a temple that's, temple that's operating, there can't be an abomination that causes desolation, which basically means that the major points of prophetic, um, prophetic elements that need to be fulfilled in the book of Revelation can't happen. So that red heifer becomes truly significant not only to the Jew but also to the to the Christian of all the things that have been going on that are pointing to to the rapture of the church end time events and the second coming the establishment of God's kingdom on earth the red heifer needs to be there now here's the big problem there has not been a qualifying red heifer that has been sacrificed about 2,000 years, right? Uh, the first one Moses did. The second one Ezra did. And there's been seven red heifers uh, from Moses' time to the time of the destruction of the second temple. But since the second temple, there has never been a red heifer that has met the criteria, biblical criteria, and has been sacrificed to consecrate another temple. Folks, we're going on 2,000 years of this. So why there was so many available red heifers from Moses to the time of the, the second temple. And now since then, there hasn't been any. To me, speaks of that for some reason, and uh, obviously God is the one who allows things and disallows things. Um, God has not allowed there to be a qualifying red heifer that meets the biblical criteria, nor has there been an opportunity for the third temple to be constructed. Okay? So if you think about that, <clears throat> one would say, well, the likelihood of there being both the green light for a temple to be built, even if there is a green light for the temple to be built, Statistically speaking, the likelihood of a qualifying red heifer to be available for sacrifice is extremely unlikely. 
Well, folks, that's why this, uh, this video is a part of the series, is because <clears throat> there is a qualifying red heifer. Well, let me put an asterisk near that, because I'm going to explain. There is a qualifying red heifer. Additionally, there are things moving in a pretty quick rate to allow Israel to reestablish uh, their temple. Oh yeah! The third temple, which we would be the temple that, in the middle of the week, gets desecrated by the Antichrist, right? So, <clears throat> let's just talk a little bit more about this red heifer, okay, and the significance of this red heifer. So, in order to um, be able to purify this temple, there's, a, there's several things that need to fall into place. One is that you need to have a qualifying red heifer. And this red heifer, and this is where it gets a little bit convoluted, because you have what the Bible says. The Bible basically says that you need to get a red heifer, and it needs to be without blemish uh, and it needs to be without flaw. Additionally, it needs to be um, sacrificed and it needs to be burnt and you need to get its ashes. This also needs to be uh, a heifer that has not been yoked. In other words, it hasn't been used to do any any work um, in like plowing fields, things like that. However, you have also re um, uh, traditions that rabbis over time, and the things that have been written in uh, um, you know in, in sacred writings of the Jews, which have added additional stipulations okay so for example in order to qualify as a red heifer uh, and you could you could look up the temple institute and look up these uh, articles and information on this um, the heifer cannot have more than two strands of hair on them that are not red additionally all the hairs on them need to be the same shade of red. Also, not only, and by the way, a heifer is a female cow, not a calf, but a cow. So it's it can't a calf can't be sacrificed, but uh, it's considered to be a cow, a heifer, at two years and one day old. Again, this is stipulations and rules that have been added, extra biblical things. Um, this cow not only cannot be used if it was yoked, but it, it couldn't, it, can't, it becomes disqualified if it was used in any sort of labor at all. Even if it was um, to the extreme where if you leaned on if a person leaned on the heifer to rest themselves, that would be considered the heifer working, so it would become disqualified. It could be never rode by anybody. It can't be, it can't have a hole in its ear or identified uh, as, as many cattle. Um, cows are identified by, um, you know, a tag on, tag on their ear. That, that would disqualify the heifer. Now there are there are rabbis who are looking for qualifying red heifers and have been for years, and um, are making sure that the potential candidates are are not getting yoked or not being, um, you know, disqualified. So they're, they're careful with the candidates. But what has happened 
uh, I believe several times, is that there's been a calf that's been born that seems to meet the qualifications of a red heifer. And what has happened over the course of time is that they've become disqualified because they've developed uh, too many hairs that are not red, sad to say. Right? For example, there was much excitement um, back in, I believe, 2018. One candidate to become a qualifying red heifer, uh, as reported by a rabbi from the Temple Institute, developed six white hairs near its nose, thus becoming disqualified. So you can see how easy it is to become disqualified uh, in the eyes based on rabbinical tradition. So, um, let's see here. The other, the other thing is that um, according to the um, Temple Institute, they made this statement five years ago. I'm not sure who, who said it, but they said, in truth, the fate of the entire world, world depends on the red heifer. There are rabbis who believe right now, even the coronavirus, they believe that the reason why there's no peace in the world and there's calamities that are happening and unrest in the Middle East and all that is because there's no temple. So they believe that God is displeased, unhappy, um, that there is no temple up and operating right now. So they make, they make a statement like this, and they, they do embrace this belief that the best thing that could happen to this world is the temple goes back up, right? And they, like I said earlier, they also believe that Messiah will be the one. In fact, they believe that there have been already nine red heifers, qualifying red heifers. Nine have been sacrificed, right? One by Moses, one by Ezra, and seven others. And they have, again, documentation of even the other seven people who have performed the sacrifice and the ritual of, the, of purifying the people. They believe that number 10 will be accomplished by Messiah. So you could see, again, the motivation with them wanting a qualifying red heifer because they believe that that will mean their Messiah is here. Right, so that's that's another really interesting thing. Another stipulation that they believe that needs to happen is that this red heifer needs to be purchased. Not necessarily that they buy a calf and raise that calf and they have ownership of that calf, but rather that they acquire this red heifer. They make a purchase for this red heifer and that uh, this red heifer is slaughtered outside the camp. It can't be slaughtered at the temple site. In fact, that they say that this has to happen at the Mount of Olives, uh, opposite of where the temple site will be. Interestingly enough, um, there are pictures here of Christ in this red heifer. One is red as a picture of sin or blood, right? And, uh, you know, though your skins be as scarlet, you know that verse in Isaiah, right? And that he's going to make them white as snow. So, you know, you get this picture of the blood of Christ purifying, uh, having the purifying properties of being able to um Clear your sin, take it away, and make you become pure and acceptable and holy before the Lord. Well, that's what this red heifer is all about, right? It's about purification, is that this red heifer um, gives up his life and spills his blood and goes under the fire of judgment so that the people could be made clean and purified, okay? That's a picture of Christ. They even put a scarlet robe around him, right, and healed him and mocked him. Male 
hailed him as king, right? Um, this, this one has been slain outside the camp, right? He was taken outside of Jerusalem at Golgotha, right? And um, made a spectacle of, right, outside the camp. So you see the connections and you see the purity, the purifying effects that is believed that this red heifer will give to the nation of Israel. Uh, ceremonial speaking, yes, this may be applicable in Old Testament to the purification of the tabernacle of the temple. But it, it doesn't qualify to have any uh, purification to dealing with the sins that we have could only be taken away by the blood of Jesus. And that's why we need him as our sacrifice and our offering, acceptable offering to God. So it is believed that once the ashes are collected, and it's, it's an arduous process of having a, a pyre of fire where the heifer will be burned. In fact, the Temple Institute in 2019, um, last year, had a dry run. They took a heifer, not a red heifer, but they took a heifer and they took the weight and they they had the, the right amount, I mean, you know, they had calculated the wood that they used, the type of wood that they used, and how much ash it produced, and did a dry run of what they will be doing when the red heifer comes. And it was it was a success. And they they believe that the mixture that they will use of all they need is a few milligrams of ash and mix with a lot of water. And that will be enough to sprinkle and sanctify the whole nation of Israel and then some. All right. Um, right now, talking about these candidates, there is believed to be two candidates uh, right now red heifers now what I did for you folks is that I have two links below in the descriptions section that I would encourage for you to watch <clears throat> because we go back right now to um, a two-year time period so that's 2018. Uh, actually, we go to a statement that was made in 2019, an article that was in 2019. And the other link has to do with 2020, which is this year, which happened recently. It is believed that um, back in 2018, one source said August 29th, 2018, and another source said November 18th, 2018, that there were qualifying candidates for the red heifer. Oh, yay! Um, I can't really corroborate all this information. This is uh, Keegan by Bro Keegs doing this and myself. Um, and the rabbis from the Temple Institute are a bit cryptic and selective of what information that they give. In fact, uh, who's raising and the location of these two candidates are kept in secret. And so we just don't know really uh, too much. We have a picture to, to show you of these uh, candidates. But we, we just don't have too much information. So this is what we found, which um, is really, really interesting. Back in 2019, when they gave an, an update on 
the candidates, they were saying in the springtime that in two years, if things go well, um, these candidates will be ready to be sacrificed and burnt for their ashes so that they could do this. This year, 2020, in March, it was reiterated by the, um, by the rabbis that things are going well with the candidates, and if things continue to go well in a year from now, this process can commence. So this is what we're trying to tie in here. We need a red heifer in order for there to be a temple, in order for there to be the abomination of desolation to be fulfilled. With all the things that we've been seeing, we are believing that the signs are there, the timeline is there, things are happening that are screaming, uh, the rapture is going to happen, the tribulation is going to begin. If there was no candidates for Red Heifer, I would be a bit concerned. I'm not saying that it, it can't happen, but keep in mind that the rabbis, the temple institution, would need to wait two years and a day for a Red Heifer to be old enough to, be, to qualify. Now, God could do anything. He could change the hearts of the Temple Institute where they'll lower the age or they'll lighten up on some of the man-made added qual you know, criteria for the heifer if they got the green light. I would imagine if Israel got the green light, all of a sudden they might become a little bit more lax. But they're, in their mind, a kosher red heifer has to meet all this criteria. We have two candidates as of, as of March 2000. 2020, we have two candidates. They are saying that it's early, early springtime in 2021, which is about a year from now, that they have two possibilities. You only need one heifer, but they got two right now that qualify. Let's just say for argument's sake <clears throat> that one of them meets criteria a year from now, which there's a strong possibility that that can happen, right? Let's say also, if the rapture convergence theory is correct, is accurate with their, with our prognosis or projections or whatever. Um, see, I got a little white patch here, right? A gray hair, I'd be disqualified if I was a heifer. Anyways, um, <clears throat> if in springtime of 2021, let's say the rapture convergence theory, let's say we get harpazo this spring, right? And there's even more chaos, craziness that's happening between the time we get harpazo to um, late summer, early fall when the Antichrist finally um, calms things down, lies about what happened, gets his, you know, the, the globalist New World Order agenda is in place, wants to get people chipped, all this other stuff. And he confirms the covenant with many, which then opens the door for Israel to begin constructing the temple. Right in the fall of 2020. twenty twenty one springtime, they can do what they need to do ceremonially with this red heifer and get the sacrifices going in early uh, in, in springtime or late spring, early summertime, you, it's not out of the realm of possibility for the, the temple to be up and running in 2021. And according to our timeline and theory, we will be in the tribulation period. Now, 
if if the tribulation period starts in the fall of 2020, right? 2021 fall, 2022 fall, 2023 fall, 2024, half a finger, this is three and a half years, 2020, 2023, 2024 spring time should be the time of the abom abomination that causes desolation when the Antichrist goes into um, the holy place and declares himself to be God. Right. So think about this. If, if at some point in 2021 the temple's up and the sacrifice, the daily sacrifice has started, um, <clears throat> That'll be well established and going by and, and, and by time the Antichrist does his thing, right? So if you if you just look at this, and that's why we're adding this, is that right now the timing of things, when the when the red heifer will be ready, and when we think the rapture will be, when the tribulation will be, and when the when the heifer will be ready to be sacrificed, everything right now is fitting nicely. Can things change? Yes. The, the the two candidates could develop 20 purple hairs behind their ears and they become disqualified. A lot of things could happen. But I'm just saying, as of now, when you just look at how things are flowing, the very fact that we have two qualifying red heifers. Oh, yeah. It's, it's not quite a coincidence, folks. The... This is working out just smoothly. I believe just as God has planned. Why did he allow so long for there not to be a qualifying red heifer? Because the temple wasn't going to be able to be built or ready to be built. But now everything seems to be fitting just so where you could say to yourself, wow, um, this is pretty amazing. So, how does this fit in? Again, we believe that 2020, the rapture, the tribulation period, could happen. And in 2021, the table's all set for the temple to be um, rebuilt and there to be heifer, uh, a qualifying red heifer for the operation of the temple to happen. All right? Now, in light of all this, um, we just want you to go before the Lord and you to study this and you to ask the Lord, is there significance in this? Are you, are you showing us something here? Are you showing something to the nation of Israel here? Are you showing something to the believers? Should we look at this and be excited or should we um, be skeptical? You know, that's between you and the Lord. We're just presenting what we believe is significant here. And so if you, again, most important thing of all this, red heifer or no, you need to have a relationship with Jesus. You need Jesus who died on the cross for your sins, rose again three days later, is coming back. Receive him today. Time is running short. And I hope to see you here, there, or in the year. God bless.